Well, there, of course, are spontaneous abortions that occur, a certain percentage of, uh, of fertilized eggs spontaneously uh, abort. But because that happens in our body, I don't think that gives us license to, uh, you know, we can't go by what animals do. You know, just because some animals eat their young, that's not an entitlement for us to do that. Uh, so what the Lord does in operation of our body, I don't think we can use that as our standard for what we are allowed to do. Uh, there's no question, interfering a after that fusion of the male and female pronucleus uh, does, uh, does then in fact uh, result in the loss of a life which had begun uh, as an embryo. And even when we get to the blastocyst, that little ball of cells that implants in the uterine wall, that little ball of cells fits on the head of a pin, or on the point of a pin. Oh, the head would be much bigger, yeah, on the point of a pin. And uh, people ask them, you know, are, are, is God really concerned about, you know, something that tiny, uh, something that pre-fully developed? And, of course, the answer is yes, that God should be concerned about us at all is amazing. I mean, here's the creator of the universe who's bigger than the universe being concerned about us human beings on earth, uh, particularly after our fall into sin and uh, we continue to add to those original sins that he should be concerned about us at all is absolutely amazing. I need the daily encouragement of Scripture and reminder <laughs> uh, to be aware that, yes, indeed, he is concerned about us. So I would just urge people to consider that the only unambiguous point uh, is the f fusion of the male and female pronucleus. Now, other points have been cited by people trying to move this back later, as they say, moving conception back to implantation. Uh, others would say that uh, you really don't have a human being until uh, the possibility of identical twinning is removed. Uh, this is the logic there. When that first cell is fertilized, the sperm and the egg, the female pronuclei get together, you have one cell, and that quickly divides to make two cells. And they in turn divide and make four. You're on your way. You're going to make a little ball of cells called a moriola, which, by the way, is a scientific name for raspberry because this little ball of cells looks like a raspberry with all these little lumps in it. Uh, this little ball of cells called a moriola has a shell. Yeah, we have an egg shell. And the shell is not a mineral shell, like in a bird or reptile. Uh, the shell is a kind of a gelatinous shell. But it's an important one because those early cells don't stick together. They can fall apart if the shell wasn't on. Uh, later on, there will be little attachments in, in cellular cement that will hold things together. But if the shell is defective and falls off, those first two cells can separate and make two babies instead of one. That's a kind of a heady thought. Now, each of us could have been two people or more, three, four, or more. Uh, and so people say, well, as long as there is no definite individual yet, because if they were to split, you could get two individuals rather than one, uh, we'll put the beginning of life or the human being off until identical twinning is no longer possible. So again, an attempt to buy a few more uh, days uh, others have a very silly requirement. They say, uh, uh, we will consider it a new human being when it's capable of, of basically supporting itself. We have 20-year-olds here in America who are incapable of supporting themselves. Uh, <laughs> so um, that, that's a silly argument. Uh, obviously, the baby is critically dependent on the placental attachment to mother right up till birth. But the baby's pretty dependent right after birth, too. It needs nutrition and uh, uh, lots of care. So uh, all the other arguments, I think, uh, are so nebulous. The only one that I think one can look at and understand uh, is that fusion of the two, pro two pronuclei giving a new genetically distinct individual that if left alone, we don't interfere, goes its way. And if we do interfere, I think people watching this broadcast uh, should be aware that the Lord is merciful and uh, I've sinned as bad and worse and have been forgiven. And I'm not putting a burden on people to uh, 
feel they can't be forgiven if, if they've aborted a child or something. Uh, the Lord tells us, go and sin no more, and there's no sin so great but what he can't cover it.